here at Fermai, four points for Mallow, eight points for the Bowers, and uh, already there has been a wide in the second half from the goalkeeper for St. Finbars, getting ready to puck out this ball once again. The goalkeeper, of course, is Brian Hurley, and there's been just one change on the day. Ryan has, Fergus Ryan has left the action and uh, John O'Sullivan comes in as a long puck out from Hurley through along to the far side of the field again and Finbar is doing all of the hurling long over the far side of the field corner forward Robert Larkin going for it but Robert Larkin push it over the line and uh, indeed the Malaman took the ball with him and it's going to be a 65 for uh, St. Finbar in the centre back Niall Hosford getting ready to take it Hosford of course did his third year at the minor won't be able to play minor hurling with Cork next year but he's had an impressive last uh, few years at minor level beating for his third medal he's about 65 meters over this 65 driving in around the square for the ball quickly running for the ball now Larkin going for the ball tapping the ball across to the center well good ball inside and caught quickly put over the bar by Michal Ryan Ryan putting that ball over the bar making no mistake about it the center forward on the St. Finbar's team he got a very slight opportunity to pick that ball up but when he did he made no mistake about it and put uh, St. Finbar's now in a comfortable five points advantage here at Fermoy in this county minor A hurling final. Nine points for the Bars, eight points for Mallow. The man of the scoreboard hasn't recorded that last point yet, but it's Mallow trying to reprieve now. The half forward driving the ball in for them is Austin Ahern. Ahern about 55 meters out from the goal, but again, this one has gone to the left hand side of the post and wide. A lot of opportunities there uh, for Mallow, but they're just not making a uh, ball around centre field and the half forward line. Goalkeeper again, Hurley. Well, he's never pucked out as much as he's done this afternoon. And a long, long puck out it is from him, dropping away past the second 70. But it's Robert Kevin trying to bring Mallow back into this game, gathering deep in his own half back then. He's got about 25 metres of the ball across the centre of the field, and he's fouled there. He's fouled, and it's going to be a free in for Mallow, and it's about 60 metres of the the field. Buckley will be the man to take this one, Buckley in the semi-final against Ballon Colleague a few weeks ago. Well, he's yet to, to mark his real presence in this final now. Driving this ball, he's a long distance out, but he makes no mistake about it. And there's a large, large following here for uh, Mallow. And that could be the score. They could see them make their way back into the game. Six points for Mallow now. Uh, five points for Mallow, rather. Nine points for St. Finbar. And there's four points between them, with over three minutes of play gone in the game. The goalkeeper, Hurley again, opting to drive this ball further to the centre. Oh, what a beautiful catch out of the air there by Fergal McCormack. Really played great stuff. And the two centre backs are playing well, but it's McCormack. On the attack, he's about 60. This one again has gone to the right hand side of the post. Coach Parker is my analyst for the day's game. John, uh, how do you see the game going now? What will Mallow have to do to come back into it? Well, I think the uh, bad ball was a bit sharper, particularly Colin Duffy in part four. to get back into the game. Austin Ahern is on the ball for Mallow. Here comes Ahern now. He's got about 20 metres of the ball and he's out of the wing. It's high. It's looking good. No, it's got to the right hand side of the post and why? And if Mallow had just tapped over the, the scores that they've had in the last, the scoreable opportunities that they've had in the last few moments, well then they would really be back in this game. They're at least by four points and we're just uh, close to five minutes of play gone in the second half. There was the goalkeeper Hurley driving this ball long and hard to the far side of the Field and Mallow, they're doing good hurling and they're coming back into the game. Here they come on the ball with Patrick Sheehan trying to turn it in towards the centre. There's a, a chamazel of players there with the bars and uh, Duffy driving the ball up the field again, drive, breaking inside towards Michal Ryan. Ryan going for the ball now. Here they come once again, they're breaking their way into the ball and the, the full back on the Mallow team, Mitchell O'Leary going for it. It's Larkin, Larkin bringing the ball inside now. Larkin trying to get into some way somehow and it's Kieran, Kevin Keller, Keller beaten to the ball this time with the corner back, Mitchell of the cornerback Patrick O'Leary rather on the Mallow team and that ball has gone out over the line it'll be a line ball for the bar 
had a fair game of hurry to this is O'Sullivan takes this line ball, gathering the ball well, chipping it well, but it's caught in the air, the air by Mitchell O'Leary. O'Leary trying to come over the ball. He's been helped out by Fergal McCormick, who's just playing about everywhere in the defence of Mallow. Players and ball and all has gone out of sight, but it's back again inside around the centre of, center of the, the goal by Mitchell O'Leary to turn the ball out but Noel Buffy is there as well a low ball in by Paul Ford but the ball has gone out and uh, indicated off of the hurley there of the goalkeeper Dale Cusick and it's going to be a 65% pen bar so 65 now is St. pen bars so the man that's been hitting them all afternoon is Niall Hotsport and again he's back out to take this one small in size but a very very fine hurler and I'd say this young man will have a very prosperous career as far as inter-county hurling is concerned in the future with Cork and indeed number 21 with Cork is no doubt his next stop he's 65 hitting it well and making no mistake about it and beautiful striker in the mould of Jim Cashman striking very very well and indeed this man has got a, certainly a very bright future uh, ahead of him as far as inter-county hurling is concerned the bar is 10 points five points with said uh, almost seven minutes of play gone in the second half all around the center of the field again Hosford going for it again ball breaking back now to the halfback is uh, Michal Martin driving the ball long down the field and caught with a full forward Paul Ford Ford about 21 minutes off then blocked by down by Mitchell O'Leary Ford out to his hand again a low shot to the goal a really tremendous goal a blistering shot to the back of the net and you don't see them much better than that that was a real gem of a goal he was blocked down the first time he rounded his man came back around and the ball is stuck somewhere in the corner of the net. I'm wondering will it ever come out of it. That was a brilliant, brilliant goal from Paul Ford as St. Finbars has stepped their authority on this uh, county minor final down. A goal at 10 for them, five points for Mallow and Mallow will certainly have to be saying uh, more than a few Hail Marys back into this game. Now one of their players is down uh, the Bars players down injured over there. He seems to be up and okay now. Jimmy Barry Murphy is over there with him. But that was a certainly a real gem of a goal that went into the back of the net. The goalkeeper, indeed, Dale Cusick, couldn't be faulted for that one. A goal and ten now for the Bars. Oh, five points for Mallow. Ball breaking and it's going to be a throw-in around the centre of the field. Going will be Anthony O'Regan and Sean Buckley. O'Regan winning the ball, driving in towards the corner forward, Robert Larkin. Larkin way out of the wing and around the square, driving in around the square again. They're going for it, trying to manage in the pull. It's Kieran Kelleher. Kelleher with the shot, but it's blocked in the line around the goal. But again, there's a shamuzzle of players there, but eventually one of the Ballow players been, of course, the cornerback, Pat O'Keefe, the 17-year-old academy student, managing to kick the ball out over the line, and Mallow living very, very dangerously in this game as it becomes a little bit cloudy and dark here in Fermoy for this game, Park McDonald, five points for Mallow, one goal and 10 for St. Finbar's. And Neil Hosford again will take this free. Neil Hosford, 65 metres out, and this man is an absolutely beautiful striker. Wasting no time, every opportunity that he gets in his striking, he strikes very quickly, doesn't take too much out of the ball, and when he hits 65, he puts a deep senior into county hurlers to shame the way he can start him completely straight over the bar. 111 for the bars, five points for Mallow, and again now, here they come once again. Mallow to come through in the forward now of uh, Mark Buckley. Buckley trying to get in there some way and Austin Ayrton is stuck in the middle of it as well but the pullback is on the ground. Brendan O'Reilly for St. Finbar he touched the ball on the ground and it's going to be a free end now and Sean Buckley scored three or four great points against Ballin College and Buckley now about 30 metres off from the goal. The angle a little bit acute. he definitely won't go for a, a goal here because he's too far out, he'll decide to hit it and put it over the bar, but Mallow need more than that if they come back into this game. Six points for Mallow, one goal and 11 points from the goalkeeper Brian Hurley. Lee in no rush to poke out this ball. St. Finbar's bidding for three in a row in this Cockbinder Championship. They had their last game in this particular round of the championship on the 16th of August, a long time ago, but they don't show, show any signs of ill effects now because the ball is in towards Paul Ford again, the goal scorer, taking on the fullback of Mitchell O'Leary. It's Ford now trying to get in there, but he took a little bit too much out of the ball on this occasion, and it's gone out over the line, and it's gone for wide, and the uh, puck out taken quickly by Dale Cusick. He's taken quickly now, ball breaking the ball to the centre to Ronan Galvin. 
ball is in towards Tiger at the full four. As the ball in his hand, trying to get a strike in. Half block down, Reardon is there again, and Robert's 41. Pulling at the ball at the full back. They are bringing it out as Brendan O'Reilly. Mallow threatened so dangerously there, but Reardon uh, went to the clouds and gathered that ball over the wing. They're driving the ball in around the square again. It'll be a great point if it goes over. It's gone over the floor, and it's a really tremendous point. A lovely, lovely seen all afternoon from Austin and Herden putting that one over the bar and that was a glorious point the best point we've seen all afternoon the points from 111 for the bars of the goalkeeper Brian Hurley getting ready to puck out this ball once again mother him to go ahead and he changes and pucks to this side of the field very close to the centre now McCormick is going to put it again and the air by Michal Ryan Michal Ryan has got his man loose and the wing is Dave Barrett Barrett for 35 the goal for Barrett driving that one to the left hand side of the post and it's gone wide. The crowd is there. All right, and what we'll do, we'll take a break and we'll come back with more commentary. In come on, let's get out of again, but the ball is being brought out by the fullback Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly now driving the ball to the centre of the field and Mallow on the attack now once again. Gives an insight to Sean Buckley. Buckley trying to get in there some way somehow the ball. 30 metres off from the goal and blocked down a bit brought out by the centre back. Hotford now going for the ball. Breaks it outside to Pascal McSweeney. McSweeney to the far side of the field and breaking it down but Fergal McCormick goes through. Breaking back to the corner back now is Pat O'Keefe. O'Keefe with a long ball. Gathered in this time but half blocked out over there and Mallow trying to come through once again. Noel Murphy down the ball. Murphy sizing up and driving the ball in right across the square. It's a lovely, lovely, oh no, it's gone to the left of the post. One of the umpires putting up their hands in the other, waving it wide, and they coincide and they say the ball has gone to the left hand side of the post and wide. Seven points for Mallow, one trial for the bars, and again the goalkeeper Brian Hurley getting ready to puck out this ball. Hurley now coming to the ball. Going well behind the, the goal route and then in the unorthodox style of Hurley driving the ball to the far side of the field. Caught beautifully out of the air by the centre field man Anthony O'Regan. O'Regan inside and they are on the attack once again. The full forward Paul Ford and Mitchell O'Leary go for it together. Ford now close to the ground and has the ball in his stick. He's got a man loose inside him. That is of course Robert Larkin. Here comes Ford. He's gone all the way through inside to the start. It's a goal! It's a goal! A goal to back of the net and Dave Barrett has put it into the back of the net and that will surely be it now. 13 almost 14 minutes of play gone the man that made all of the hard work was Ford, gave a lovely pass inside to Barrett and it's the bar two goals and 12, Mallow 7 points and it's an uphill struggle now ball breaking back to the centre of the field where Pascal McSweeney has the ball for St. Finbar, drives it inside to the full forward line once again, the corner forward Robert Larkin has the ball, Larkin inside and giving a lovely ball, Larkin is inside but the full back bringing out now is Mitchell O'Leary for Mallow, Mallow and Mitchell O'Leary drive the ball over 60 five metres down the field and they're trying to get back into the thick of this action but the halfback is Michal Martin Michal Martin and Austin Ahern go for it together here comes Ahern now he's about 65 metres from the goal the angle very acute will the corner forward be able to keep it in play there was no way that Mount Buckley could keep that one in play it was running too far and too wild and uh, the game must certainly now be gone out of the reach of Mallow. Two goals and 12 points to Mallow, seven points. And the goalkeeper, Brian Hurley, again getting ready to puck out this ball. A tremendous crowd here in Park McCall this afternoon. And for my, for this uh, County Minor A hurling final, the score might suggest not a great game, but I can tell you otherwise. It's fast and it's exciting, and the hurling is indeed very good. Ball over in the far side of the field now, a line ball, and the man to take it will be Sean Buckley. So Buckley now 
Getting ready, bending low, but not driving the ball. Under all at foul, only star is Robert Galvin. Galvin back to Noel Murphy. Murphy driving the ball long down towards Tiger Rears. And again, Mark Buckley is there as well. But the ball has again gone wide, and Mallow failed to make a score out of that one. Gone to the right and to gone to the right hand side of the post there and Malov had twelve wides in the game so far. A lot of wides. Two goals and twelve for the bar, seven points for Malov. The watch reading almost sixteen minutes of play gone as Hurley driving the ball long and hard. The way, way past the second seventy yard line. Going up for the ball is Murphy ball falling down to Robert Galvin, but it quickly turned in the centre by Mihal Ryan, the same pin bounce into forward. Out again now. They fired going for the ball, but turned up the field by the half back on the ball team and they're really trying to get back into it but from one half back to the other it falls back to Pat O'Sullivan O'Sullivan going for the ball back now to another half back that is of course on the Mallow team at uh, Michal O'Leary or Mitchell O'Leary going for the ball driving it way down the field and it's St. Finbar's doing all of the better hurling at the moment Niall Hosford going for the ball on the ground very close to the ground Robert Galvin is there as well about 50 metres out forward the, the Mallow goal and as Hurley's been broken around the centre of the field they haven't the ball hasn't moved the players are doing a lot of dashing and running as Galvin on the ball trying to get it to Virgil McCormick the ball turned inside the centre but it's Mitchell O'Leary who wins the ball about 30 metres off his own goal and gives it to Robert Galvin Galvin now driving this ball and leashing it on Almighty clearance out to the other 21 and this the left hand side of the field going for now is Austin Aherdon Austin Aherdon going for the ball along with Michal Martin Aherdon now going for the ball still trying to come through the ball giving it a nice pass inside but they need a goal around this 14 metre line the goalkeeper Hurley managing to turn that ball off of his line doing well to do so and gives it a sight to Pat O'Sullivan the half back O'Sullivan now with the ball not a great clearance very close to the line Dave Barrett going for the, the ball al along there with, with Noel Murphy down to the centre again Michal Ryan and Fergal McCormack it's Michal Ryan who wins this one Michal Ryan 35 metres from the goal a little bit more driving this one to the left hand side of the post and it's gone wide the left of the post and wide and the goalkeeper on the Mallow team Dale Cusick wasting no time 16 years of age Mallow haven't won the title in 57 years this ball close to the centre of the field now Dave Barrett turning the ball into the attack once again for St. Finbars a Barrett again now down towards the corner forward the corner forward is Kieran Kevin Keller Keller inside to the half Oh, the half forward is Colum Duffy the nifty Colum Duffy inside towards Paul Ford Ford goes through it again but it's caught for the corner back the corner back is Niall Ducey Ducey outside to the centre Paul breaking away now they're trying to come to it Paul Walsh Walsh very trying to get it up there some way he was followed by the centre field man on the St. Finbar's team Anthony O'Regan and Fergal McCormick has the ball placed and wasting no time but throws the ball quickly up into the air to land high and clear and that's an almighty clear uh, point from him he was about 85 metres out from the goal 20 metres in from the line and that alone had he an angle to contend with but also 85 metres he made no mistake about it and driving the ball a great point over the bar from Mallow from Fergal McCormick 8 points from Mallow 2 goals and 12 for the bars and the goalkeeper Bright Hurley again driving his ball to the centre of the field McCormick and Ryan go up for Falling back to collect the ball is Robert Galvin. Galvin with the white helmet, dropping the ball to the centre to McCormack once again. McCormack going for the ball, collected and turned away from him, but it's Fergus, uh, Francis Willis, the captain of the team, is in there to help him out. Inside to the full forward line, Sean Buckley is there again. Sean Buckley, ball breaking out by the full back line, Brendan O'Reilly for St. Finbars. Now going for the ball is the full forward, Tiger Raisin. Raisin trying to get the ball up some way, some hard. Raisin has the ball, breaking inside down, but he's fouled. Paul there on the way through and John O'Sullivan the man that came in there as a substitute played his part in that one too and it's going to be a free Sean Buckley getting ready to take a quick one from the 21 metre line but indeed the referee very close to him and told him he'll have to take his time there'll be nothing like that because one of the St. Finbar's team it looks to me from here that it's Michal Martin that's picked up a little bit of an injury it is Michal Martin but uh, everything seems to be okay with him He's looking good and he's up and uh, the man to take the free will be Sean Buckley. Sean Buckley will take the this free, 24 or 5 metres out, a low shot but it's caught inside by Pat O'Sullivan, the half-back, now turning it out again to Sean Buckley. Buckley setting a little dummy, trying to get some help from somebody somewhere but he's not getting too much of it because it's in the forward, Francis Willis wasn't able to get it. Falls aside to Ronan Galvin, Galvin with the shot and Galvin putting the ball over the bar. A lovely score from Galvin and uh, 12 wides now for Mallow, 8 wides for St. Finbar's and they're 
nurturing their way back into this game. They haven't got an awful lot of time though. 20 minutes of play gone in the second half. Nine points for Mallow, two goals and 12 for the Bars. And over the last five minutes or so, it's been Mallow who have been doing the better hurling. McCormick goes up for the ball along with Michal uh, Ryan. It's Ryan now who has the ball, giving the ball quickly with his left hand inside to the corner forward, Kevin Kelleher. Kevin Kelleher with the shot and that's a good one and it's a lovely reply. It fell to Robert Larkin rather. It was Robert Larkin who got that ball. He hit it quickly and made no mistake about it and it all came in there from a quick ball from the centre field line. Here come Mallow on the attack once again. It's Patrick Sheehan going for the ball. Patrick Sheehan very close to the Garner, trying to get it up there some way again. And he's offside. He's around the centre of the field. He's going in the wrong direction. Pat O'Sullivan helps him to turn it in the other direction. It's O'Sullivan gathering the ball again with the green helmet now. Socks turn on the ankle. Ball falling inside to Dave Barrow. Wasting no time. Turning it quickly like Sean Foley of Limerick used to do. Now turns the full back line. Mitchell O'Leary and Paul Ford go for it together. O'Leary winning the ball. Gives it outside to the corner. Back to the corner. Back is Pat O'Keefe. O'Keefe has the ball and turning this ball inside to Fergal McCormack. McCormack now dropping this ball way past the second 70 yard line from a long clearance towards Francis Willis. Willis has the ball on the hurley now with the left hand driving it into the attack once again, pulling on the ball inside and it's to John O'Sullivan and Mark Buckley. But it comes back to the corner back as Kieran Higgins. Higgins to this side of the field, the centre field by going up is Pascal McSweeney. Falls out to Austin Ahern. Ahern throwing the ball inside and trying to collect it again, but it doesn't do so because Michal Martin has the ball and drives it long and hard down the field. He throws Paul Ford. Ford going for the ball now again. Trying to get it up some way, somehow. 55 metres off on the goal and Ford still has the ball. Control it is. Leaving it off on the left hand. Quickly inside to the full forward. The corner forward. Larkin. Larkin across but the corner back on the Mallow team. Trying to bring it out is Pat O'Keefe. O'Keefe going for it in there too is uh, Robert Larkin. A lovely bit of stick work there from the corner back. Pat O'Keefe on the Mallow team. He managed to gather that ball up under tremendous pressure. And it'll be a free in the corner back to Fergal McCormick has made his way back down there to take it. McCormick now standing over the ball. Knows the time is not on their side. 23 minutes almost gone in the second half now. And McCormick ball drops it into the field. Pat O'Sullivan wasting no time turning it quickly on the ground. The half back now for Mallow has the ball is Michal Martin or for Mallow for, 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 for the balls order. Down on the attack again, and here comes John O'Sullivan inside a low shot, but collected by the corner back of the St. Finbar's team, Tony O'Donovan. O'Donovan to this side of the field, and Mallow applied all the pressure down the half forward goal for it. It's Patrick Sheehan. Sheehan inside to, to the man, the captain of the team, Willis. Willis to Sheehan again. The block block down now from Sheehan, and coming out with the ball. My man of the match, Niall Hostel is on the ball. Hostel outside to the half forward column Duffy. From one nifty man to the other nifty man, and he's driving his ball. Lovely, long, and hard striking way down the field. Now on the game, the game starts to open up inside to Larkin. Robert Larkin on the ball. 21 minutes off of the goal. A low danger shotgun right across the face of the goal, and it's gone wide. Dale Cusick has run quickly to collect the ball. He collected it behind the goal and hits a quick long puck out to the far side of the field towards the captain of the Mallow team, Francis Willis. Willis on the attack now, he's got about 25 metres with the ball, trying to leave it off on the left hand, manages to do so, gives it a great ball in across the square, but there's no way that the corner forward Mark Buckley could keep that one in, it's gone out over the line and that one has gone wide, 13 wide they have now for, for Mallow, that one got to the left of the post and wide, Mallow 9 points, St. Finbar's 2 goals and 13, and Hurley getting ready to poke out this ball once again. Well, the referee has given the go-ahead, a little bit of a hold-up for a moment, but the referee has given the go-ahead to Murphy to fuck out the ball. Fergal McCormack now, really playing outstanding for Mallow. McCormack now, still coming through the ball, still a little dummy on his way, about 50 metres off from the goal, and that tremendous hurl in from Fergal McCormack. He gathered the ball in his own half-back line, went about 35 metres with it, and hit it for about uh, 50 metres or more out from the goal, and put it over the bar to give Mallow their 10 point in this County Minor A hurling final. 20 four minutes of play gone in the second half two goals and 13 for St. Finbar, 10 points for Mallow and they've been brave in their, and uh, their efforts in the second half to come back into the game despite the two goals bust by St. Finbar. Dave Ballard is very close now, trying to get the ball into the attack once again but the referee John Motherway awarding it through him uh, one of the St. Finbar players, that's Dave Ballard who's on the ground and it's going to be a throw in between the centre back, centre forward, Michal uh, Ryan and Francis Willis. Indeed, both wearing number 11. Turned down the field by Patrick Sheehan. Sheehan now going for the ball. Turned it in inside to the centre to Fergal McCormack. McCormack is on the ball. He's got inside about three of them. McCormack still sailing through. The water is muddy. A shot. A great, a great save. The greatest save that you would ever see by a goalkeeper. 
and really tremendous save. He turned it over the bar, Brian Hurley and Malloy St. Fenbar supporters alike. They applaud the goalkeeper, Brian Hurley, for one of the finest saves this one has ever seen. He left the leap back with the ground, turned it with the left hand, but it was some save. Fergal McCormick pushed his way through with that, picked up an injury on the way through, though, because he's now receiving attention. 11 points for Mallow, two goals of 13 for the Bars, and one must give great credit to both teams. They've never lacked in their commitment, and indeed, John Parker, our analyst in today's game, that was some save. Uh, fantastic save, a ground shot from 20, less than 20 yards. I don't know how he got to it. He threw himself over and touched it over the bar. Fantastic save. Jared Cunningham standard. A lovely, lovely save that was indeed, it will be one of the talking points of this county minor A hurling final regardless of the result. But the result at this stage with 26 minutes of play gone in the second half looks very much for St. Fenberg. But, you know, it's early days yet maybe to be suggesting that because Mallor 11 points, St. Fenberg 2 goals and 13. St. Fenberg's on the attack once again. Now it's Buffy on the ball. Buffy with a long ball for Mallor. He's on half back then, driving it to the far side of the field. Nobody there to collect it has gone out over the line, and St. Finbars won't be in any great hurry to take this line ball. Jimmy Barry Murphy is over there, giving a little bit of coaching to Kieran Higgins, and indeed the coaching maybe is take it easy now, Kieran, because time is on our side. Kieran Higgins getting ready to take this line ball, the corner back on the St. Finbars team. Well, he'll have to hold up for a moment because Dave Barrett, one of the half-overs on the St. Finbar's team, picked up a little injury. He seems to be okay now, though. He's given the go-ahead. And uh, they're getting ready to take it. And indeed, the, that man, Brian Hurley, well, the announcer for Breeden, they say he's as good as a ton of Eden because he's a second cousin of the great Jimmy Barry Murphy himself. Now they come again and Mallow trying to bring the ball way down the field, collected by Francis Willis, their captain. Willis driving the ball, not down that far, but it's collected by the cornerback, the cornerback for St. Finbar's as Higgins. He's fouled as he went for that ball, and it's going to be a free about 47 or 8 metres out from the St. Finbar's, from the St. Finbar's goal, about 20 in from the line. And the centre back will take it is Niall Hosford. Hosford taking this ball, driving it a long, long ball down to the towards the 21 metre line, collected by Noel Murphy. Murphy clearing some great ball this afternoon along with Fergal McCormick down to the full back for St. Finbar. Though he collected with great ease, Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly now driving the ball down again, and it's Willis who has the ball. Willis now doing a lot of hurry in the last 10 minutes or so, giving a long ball in towards the attack once again. Can Mallow make use of this one? But no, the goalkeeper again, the goalkeeper Brian Hurley. Early gets through, but it's Austin Ahern who beats him to it this time. Get a lovely shot in there into the attack once again around the square. A shot, and again it's saved. It's saved, then bought over the line. Bought over the line by the corner back, Kieran Higgins. How he did it, we'll never know. Outside now to Dave Barrett. Barrett hopping the ball in the hand. It's going to be a free him. He won his tackle well, but. It wasn't to be good enough because he fouled the ball as he did and Tiger Reardon, the full forward, is taking this free. He's gone a long ways out from the goal. He's telling all of the big men to get in there. And now Fergal McCormick was anticipating a quick one, but uh, that's not going to be the way now because Sean Buckley, the uh, Austin Ahern, is there because Sean Austin Ahern is on the ground uh, injured, but uh, the... Mentors have had a little word with him, and he's okay. Reardon with the free towards Fergal McCormick, flicked away from him. Niall Hosford coming out for like a ton of bricks. There too is Colum Duffy. Duffy now, ball broken away, and it's uh, here comes Fergal McCormick. McCormick blazing it in low inside, inside the goalkeeper once again. He manages to pull it out. The goalkeeper, of course, Hurley, boots it out a little bit and cleared further the field by Pat O'Sullivan. They follow it now, goes through along with Patrick Sheehan, but the ball has gone out over the line, and time is certainly gone out. Three now for Mallow because it's 29 minutes and 39 seconds of play gone in the second half. Two goals at 13 for the Bars, 11 points for Mallow. A line ball, the sun continuing to blaze down here at Park McGarland in Fermi. The half forward now going for half back taking that line ball is Pat O'Sullivan. Breaking down to the far side of the field, but the other corner back is Neil Dial Ducey for Mallow. Flicked away from him and he quickly offered the stick there. 
of Kevin Kelleher, but it was going nowhere. Gone to the right and the left hand side of the post, rather, and gone wide. Now, some of the crowd anticipating that the game is as good as over. The watch is telling me that because it's 30 minutes and a little bit more of seconds gone in this second half. St. Finbars will equal the record they did in the 30s of three in a row and the referee awarding a free in there to Mallow. But maybe it's a little bit uh, too late now for Mallow to come back into this game. 11 points for Mallow, two goals and 13 for the Bars. And Ronan Galvin getting ready to take this free for... Uh, Mallow. Anything they do at this stage will possibly only add to add a further little bit of decoration to the score. He hits that free, hoping to drop it in, but he didn't hit it all that well. It's all over, and St. Finbars have won the County Minor A Hurling Championship for the third year in succession. They did it in the 30s, and the supporters all around happy with a very, very fine game of hurling, and indeed for Jimmy Barry Murphy and his coach there as well, Donald O'Grady, a very very happy afternoon for St. Fenbars and a tremendous crowd here at uh, Park McGall in Fermoy for this minor hurling final and to be commended to are the supporters who travel in such large numbers and indeed also the Fermoy Club for the amount of work that they did in, in preparation of the pitch and indeed every uh, St. Fenbars winner of
I hope that I will have uh, God's help your PhD to leave for as long as he did. You're <laughs> <laughs> 10 years old or whoever. <laughs> 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 Derek, 